It's a real honour and pleasure to be here and also to share with you uh, a bit of the work that I've been involved in. Um, I've been involved in uh, mental health from quite a holistic point of view, I think, because I have experience as a mental health carer, but also um, the overall challenges that that brings to, to carers, to your own um, overall well-being, uh, but then also in mental health research and capacity building uh, and in uh, lecturing as well. I also have a professional qualification as a therapeutic coach, um, so I take a 360 degree uh, view, if you like, to um, mental health and to my experiences in that respect as well. And I would like to share um, a little bit more about the global mental health work I am involved in, and specifically in relation to stigma and discrimination and tackling human rights abuses as well. So I will say very briefly something about why we should focus on mental health globally then also why specifically we should look at tackling stigma and discrimination and human rights abuses. I will also set out a few of the key actions that we see globally, uh, but also some grassroots initiatives that we have seen in high-income countries and low- and middle-income countries as well. Um, and I have a few take-home messages that I would like to share with you in conclusion before I have the honour to introduce to you the documentary Breaking the Chains by Erminia Coluccio. So first of all, why should we focus on mental health globally? For three big reasons, high prevalence, low investment, and negative predictions. When we look at high prevalence, around one in four people globally will experience a mental health problem in their lifetimes. And this results, as you can imagine, in a huge burden of disease affecting not only the individual, but also their families, communities, and wider society. And we do see impact at personal level, uh, family level, community level, but also economic level and systems more broadly, including health and care systems now and in the future. And when we look at investment globally, we see that health budget spends on mental health and specifically on public mental health are really negligible, particularly in comparison to other areas, uh, for instance, cardiovascular diseases, um, cancers, but also treatments, pharmaceutical treatments, for instance, uh, as opposed to other types of treatments. And also we see that almost one third of countries don't have a proper mental health budget set aside or, for that matter, a proper mental health strategy within their country. All of this, as you can imagine, leads to negative predictions, and indeed the WHO, but also nation states, predict that mental health problems will actually soon overtake the total global burden of disease if not urgent action is undertaken. And we look uh, specifically at the economic burden of disease, for instance, um, you see that mental illness and cardiovascular illnesses are topping the bill, and specifically mental illnesses. And this is 2010 data, so that is not even taken into account the recession we've gone through globally, which has only exacerbated this. So why should we then focus specifically on tackling stigma and discrimination and human rights abuses in mental health globally? Well, we see that, as I pointed out, socio-economic issues and inequalities contribute towards an increased mental Ill illness globally, and particularly common mental disorders we have seen uh, more recently uh, on the increase. And one of the major obstacles that is reported um, in, in relation to this is actually addressing the serious issues around stigma, discrimination, but also human rights abuses. And uh, this is quite often caused by people's lack of knowledge, so um, mental health illiteracy, uh, for instance, um, attitudes, behaviours, which can lead to an impoverished uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, lower quality of life, social marginalisation and social exclusion, but it also hampers help-seeking treatment adherence and recovery. And all of this results in a loss to uh, opportunity to the individual, but also to their families, communities, and ultimately society as a whole. When we look then at comorbidity of physical and mental conditions, for instance, and also crisis situations, we see that in terms of comorbidity, for instance, people report that mental ill health is often perceived as much worse and experienced as, as much worse, including the stigma attached uh, to it, than the physical uh, condition they might be dealing with. 
and is it, its associations. And this in turn hampers not only the mental health recovery, but also the physical health recovery. We also see that people with comorbid uh, conditions of mental and physical health problems are not receiving the treatment, or quite often not receiving the treatment, for their physical health problems because their uh, symptoms are quite often attributed to their mental health uh, problems rather than actually a proper investigation of potential physical health conditions. And as you can imagine, this leads to um, a shorter life expectancy of people with mental health problems, but also an overburdening of the health and care systems. And when we look specifically at crisis situations, for instance, and yesterday um, I had the pleasure to talk about psychosocial uh, impacts of uh, the Ebola crisis, and I know that some of you were there at the Cambridge Institute of Public Health Away Day. Um, we do see indeed that in terms of forced migration, for instance, in terms of the Ebola outbreak 2014 and other epidemics and natural disasters, for instance, that mental health and particularly the long-term mental health impacts are quite often often overlooked and we really should focus on that because it's a big issue. Now mental health illiteracy amongst lots of other things uh, can lead to stigma and discrimination in turn can lead to severe human rights abuses and indeed the WHO has declared a global human rights emergency in mental health stating that all over the world people with mental disabilities experience a wide range of human rights violations both within and outside of the healthcare context. And when we look within the healthcare context, we see that in many countries, for instance, people do not have access to just the basic mental health care and treatment they require. And then in other countries, for instance, we see that an absence, and we heard that earlier on actually, an absence of community-based mental health care means that only care is available in psychiatric institutions, which quite often are associated with um, uh, discriminatory practices, but also inhumane uh, conditions, degrading conditions and human rights uh, violations. When we look outside of the healthcare context in wider society, for instance, we see that people with psychosocial disabilities are quite often excluded from community life and are quite often denied just the most basic rights, shelter, food, a roof above their head, clothing. And also experience discrimination in employment, for instance, in housing, in education. In some countries, people don't have the right to vote, they don't have the right to marry, uh, to possess a home, and so on. As a consequence of this, many people with mental health problems face uh, severe issues around extreme poverty, they find themselves uh, sometimes homeless, or are criminalized against and might um, end up in prison. And as you can imagine, all of this really uh, is, is, um, is not helping with your recovery, but also um, there is no access to appropriate care, for instance. Uh, integration to society is hampered, and all of this creates a very negative downward spiral of disempowerment, of hopelessness, of desperation, which can ultimately also lead to suicide with all the consequences attached to that. All of this has been referred to by Arthur Kleinman as our failure of humanity, which it really is. And the area of human rights within mental health is still uh, very, very much a gap area that really needs to be addressed. And I think this uh, meeting today here is a fantastic step uh, towards this. Now, when we look at global actions, for instance, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, this is just highlighting a few big global major actions, we see that since 2008, we do actually have a UN Convention for the Rights of um, Persons with a Disability, and this also includes people with psychosocial disabilities. And the Convention states that everyone people with psychosocial disabilities, people with disabilities, are full members of society with full legal rights like everyone else, including the right to be heard, the right to be taken seriously, the right to be included in society and participate fully in society, and also the right to receive good care. We also see the Mental Health Action Plan from the World Health Organization 2013-2020, 
um, as an operational framework globally, and also the Quality Rights Initiative from the World Health Organization. And they have made tackling human rights violations and promoting quality of care in mental health their key focus. We also see that they underline human rights, uh, a human rights framework, a human rights perspective, as completely essential in responding to the global burden of mental disorders. They underline the need for mental health strategies, actions and interventions for treatment, prevention and promotion to be compliant with the CRPD, as outlined above, and uh, also with international, national and local uh, human rights initiatives and frameworks. Now, their vision is to create a world in which mental health is valued, promoted, protected, and psychosocial disabilities are prevented. The aim is to ensure that persons affected are able to exercise their full human rights and access high quality of care, culturally appropriate health and social care in a timely way to promote recovery, attain the highest possible level of physical and mental health, and participate fully in society free from stigmatization, from discrimination and from any human rights violations. And we were talking about toolkits earlier on and, uh, and frameworks. WHO has now uh, a specific toolkit, the Quality Rights Monitoring Toolkit, which is a validated and standardized toolkit for monitoring quality of care and human rights um, <coughs> in mental health facilities. And this is a holistic tool that also takes into account, as we heard uh, before, environment, etc. We have seen in the past few years many grassroots initiatives as well. And again, this is by no means exhaustive. There are so many now um, popping up everywhere. Um, to promote good mental health, to promote social inclusion, and also to tackle stigma and discrimination and human rights abuses. And this is obviously promise is there, but we also see uh, from Central Africa, for instance, uh, this billboard saying, do people suffering mental illness deserve this? You can do better, be part of that change. Um, we then see, that's from a low uh, income country, but then we also see other initiatives like in Scotland at this moment, every October, there is a three week Scottish mental health arts and film festival very inclusive, uh, Scottish nationwide, very much worth it to uh, go to. The See Me campaign in Scotland, the Time to Change campaign in England, the Cool Ten Arts uh, Festival in London, Mad Pride in Ireland, um, the Stigma Tour Bus in the Netherlands, uh, for instance, going around promoting good mental health and uh, how we can tackle stigma and discrimination and human rights abuses and constraints. So that's just to highlight a few local initiatives. Now in conclusion, and also in the run up to Mental Health Day tomorrow, 10th of October, and I wish you all a very uh, happy Mental Health Day, um, I would like to share this take home message in, uh, shrouded in a framework of advocacy, if I may. First of all, the actor Robin Williams, the late actor Robin Williams said that, I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up all alone, but it's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone. And I think that's very true. So I would say, let us. Let's be ambassadors and change agents and promote good mental health. Let's be empathetic and compassionate. We heard that before, not only to others, but also to ourselves. Let's reach out to others and connect and see the strengths uh, rather than the weaknesses uh, in each other. And let's harness these strengths and build assets for good health, good mental health, and healthy individuals, healthy communities, healthy societies. Because at the end of the day, we are ultimately all people with our strengths and weaknesses, with our hopes and fears, our ambitions and inspirations and aspirations. And, um, I would like to suggest to focus on the things that unite us and not on the things that divide us so we can thrive together. Thank you.